Okay, so this is the completed or almost completed transom assembly. Um, got these braces attached and I did run into one little slight issue. Uh, when I went to set this up to uh, make some measurements to check some, uh, another piece that I was making to go along with this, I discovered that I have just a little slight tied up here real quick okay I have just a little slight wobble I've got a little small as you can see right there I've got a little bit of a gap when I set this piece up level on this uh, sheet of plywood I have a little bit of a gap here whereas on this side uh, it's sitting perfectly flat I think what happened as a matter of fact I'm 99.9% I'm, I'm sure what happened is when I attached these pieces and all these other pieces and all these uh, little cleats and, and uh, these other little uh, pieces to the structure there what happened was is when that uh, when that epoxy cured I think it might have shrunk just a little bit and induced a warp because what I found out was is I've actually got just a, this, a slight little warp in this flat piece right here and uh, so that's easy enough to, to fix. What I'm going to have to do is when I get ready to attach ribs, attach stringers, the keel beam, I'm going to have to uh, lock this thing down in place and secure it to uh, these, these fixtures right here that I made, these little saw horses. And I made these special just for that. I'm going to have to make sure everything is clamped securely in place before I install those, uh, install the ribs, install the stringers, the keel beam, and before I start applying any epoxy. Easy enough to fix and uh, not, a, not a major problem and it's only off ever so slightly. Uh, it is maybe a quarter of an inch but uh, this piece and this piece they're not completely parallel like I said though it's, it's easy enough to fix. I'm glad I caught that now. Uh, like I said, I was checking some other things, uh, checking some other measurements uh, on a, with a, another piece that goes with this and uh, when I caught that. And uh, what I have discovered, like I said, I got just a little bit of a bow, a little bit of a warp in this flat piece right here. And so what I'm going to do, and i get this back here, back up just a little bit so I can show you is I'm going to have to lay a, a little small board diagonally across this um, transom back here on the back and then lay another piece on top of it and kind of form, you know, like, like an X and I'm going to have to clamp the opposing corners to try and draw that warp back out of it and then just clamp everything in place like I said clamp these pieces down get them parallel get uh, the ribs made, get the stringers in, and get everything clamped down before I apply the thickened epoxy. And that way that thing will be locked down, it will be rigid. And uh, once everything's clamped into place, then, um, uh, then we can uh, minimize the effects of that warp. And I, I'm pretty sure that's what happened. I'm pretty sure it just the, the epoxy just shrunk on this when it was curing. Uh, another thing too is I was kind of a little bit frustrated after that last video that I thought I had uh, just made the mistake of not deleting videos off of that other camera, but the other camera did fail. It just uh, it got to the point where I turned it on and it just shut off and turned it on and it would shut itself off. And so I said, okay, well, the, you know, the camera's just shot. So I'm shooting this on a new video camera and uh, still kind of learning the little nuances of this camera. It's a used one. I picked it up at a pawn shop. And uh, so... Yeah, anyway, uh, hopefully now, in the future, uh, we won't have that issue with the videos. But anyway, um, as I get further along, when I get this all set up and get it all in the uh, fixture, and uh, hopefully I don't have to unpack all that so we can move. We're still looking to move. We're still looking down Magnolia, Montgomery area, uh, down around the northwest of Houston. And uh, still looking in that area. And yeah, we're still looking kind of over in, in the New Braunfels area too. We just have a very, very wide search area, about 200 miles where we're looking. It just all depends on where we can uh, find uh, something affordable. So anyway, um, 
And when I get all that set up, like I said, I'll get back to you. More to come. Okay, I'm back. And as you can tell, uh, kind of rearranged some things here in the garage. And um, all these sheets of uh, Maranti plywood I had stacked up over here, they're now over here just sitting on sawhorses and uh, propped up on the ends to keep them from sagging on the end so we don't get a bow in them. And uh, remember, I was telling you that in that last video that these two pieces these two braces are not quite parallel this one's just a little bit higher so i had to kind of make this little apparatus or this little rube goldberg machine or whatever you want to call this thing uh, to secure the stern assembly in place and of course i made some spacer blocks down here to get everything nice and even uh, made these little pieces here just to hold everything down, clamp everything in place, keep this thing from moving around. And I've got my ribs cut out uh, that will attach here on the forward end of this brace and in the middle of this brace. I don't know if you can see that where that, that, that notch is at. Uh, those ribs are right over here. Um, get my drawings out of the way. I've uh, been working on this all day and finally got these two pieces made. Actually, there's two ribs here. Um, this is the, this is actually going to be the one that's going to be in the aft section, the aftmost rib. Um, got it marked rib number one. I'm numbering them aft to forward, starting with number one. Uh, you can see right here where I've got it marked to make uh, uh, these notches here. And they're going to interface with these notches here and then uh, once we get all of that ready to go and of course then I've got a lot of work to do on these uh, on the keel beam and on the stringers here and I've just got these stringers laying flat they've been hanging on that wall right there all summer long and uh, it was finally time to get them out of hibernation and uh, get them down start working on them and got a lot of work to do on these pieces too uh, they ended up being just a little bit tall. I mocked them up a while ago off camera and a little bit tall. It's like I'm going to have to trim oh probably about an eighth of an inch off the top right here and uh, they're a little bit tall because I had measured for a, uh, a floor deck that was going to be seven inches from the center of the stern and it, of course it's got that dead rise angle. It's probably easier to show you back here. So from this center point up, I measured a line uh, seven inches and went all the way across, squared it off. That's where my floor is going to sit. Uh, these little pieces right here, like I said, a little bit tall. And uh, I think I left them that way on purpose because uh, it's always easier to come back and cut more material out later. And as you can see right there, um, and maybe you can see that, maybe you can't but I've actually left a line about an eighth of an inch right there so yeah I cut them a little bit long when I made these pieces and uh, if I recall correctly my intent was to come back and do a final trim on them later well later is here so uh, we gotta get the uh, final trim done on these and also we gotta notch these out for the ribs just like uh, we do just like I did these pieces here and just like I did these I gotta put notches in these and I'm also going to do the lightning holes so I have a lot of work to do on these pieces now this uh, keel beam is just kind of like I said it's just kind of mocked up right now it's uh, get my finger out of the way it's just kind of mocked up but that's uh, that's how it's going to sit um, it's just like it's just, it's just resting there right now I don't know it's just uh, grace and miracle of God and bubble gum keeping this thing from falling over right now but um, and I guess our bubble gum gave out but anyway uh, yeah I got a lot of work to do to these pieces to get them ready uh, not really close to uh, uh, bonding these in just yet give me about a week and uh, hopefully we'll have everything ready to go now that should be a show in and of itself uh, trying to get all these pieces put in at the same time and at the same time underneath here is the forward bulkhead and uh, you can't see it it's kind of covered up 
uh, by that kill beam. And of course we've got some shadows here too. So, uh, but anyway, take my word for it. That's the forward bulkhead. And uh, that has to attach also. And I've got to make a fixture. I've got this little table made. Uh, I've got that sheet of plywood fastened down to these sawhorses. And I'm uh, probably going to have to make some kind of little apparatus uh, up there just like I made back here to hold that piece in place and hold all these pieces in alignment and that's the biggest thing I gotta get all these pieces in perfect alignment uh, the center of that bulkhead has got to be aligned with the uh, center of the stern and uh, so that we don't have uh, you know everything kind of uh, you know going sideways there we gotta make sure we get all these parts nice and square and uh, so I'll be working on that and of course uh, I'm going to have to take a pause from working on the boat here over the weekend. We're going down to Magnolia and Montgomery, Texas looking in houses and uh, I already found a, what I believe, now I'm, I'm not going to be presumptuous, but I already found what I believe is a, a church home down there. So um, yeah, we're just going to, hey, hold on just a second. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, this new camera has got the little screen that flips around so you can uh, see what you're recording and uh, so you can uh, get a better picture of what the camera's looking at. Now, okay, I like that. Uh, uh, whoop, whoop, whoop. Okay, there we go. Get myself back in the center. And so, uh, but like I said, I believe we've already found a church home down there. And uh, it's, it's got a really, really uh, very good men's ministry and uh, very good women's ministry too so uh, hopefully this all works out uh, we're going to go down there like I said we're going to look at houses get back get back center there and we're going to go look at houses this weekend and uh, hopefully that'll all work out and uh, I'll be able to oh boy give Southwest Airlines my resignation uh, sometime after the first of the year and that, that would be nice man I'm just tired uh, maybe I'll go work at Home Depot Maybe they'll give me a discount on lumber, although I don't know if I want Home Depot lumber in this. But anyway, that's all I have for you tonight. Um, just remember, um, you know, God loves you. And, uh, you know, in spite of everything going on right now, I know at the same time it seemed chaotic, but, you know, God really is in control. And, um, you, know, uh, you know, what else can I say? You know, just uh, keep the faith and uh, pray. And, um, that's all I have for you tonight, and thank you for watching. Okay, that's where I'm at on the boat build. Uh, I guess slow and steady will win the race. We'll get there. Um, we're in the Christmas season now. It's uh, the 10th of December, and uh, you know Christmas will be here before you know it. And uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about that tonight. You know, Christmas is about more than uh, giving gifts and exchanging gifts uh, with your loved ones and friends. Uh, Christmas, uh, it's about one thing, and it's about uh, the celebration of the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, when I first started with uh, working with Southwest Airlines back in 2011, uh, I was working graveyard shift at the time, and they cut us loose uh, about three o'clock in the morning, said, you know, okay, yeah, everybody going home early, you know, have a good day. Well. You know, at 3 o'clock in the morning, I didn't want to walk into the house and startle my wife. So I kind of went and, and uh, just rode around in my truck for a little while. Like I said, I was working graveyard shift. And um, I listened to uh, Christian radio. And uh, right about 4, 4.30, John MacArthur uh, came on. And uh, I want to read to you tonight an excerpt from that sermon because it's really... Uh, it really touched my heart and it, 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 to me it defines what the Christmas season is all about and especially uh, here in 2020 uh, you know folks we need we need Christ more than ever uh, especially after the year that we've been through and uh, we really need to as a, as, a, as a nation as a people we need to get back to uh, the Bible we need to get back to Christ so anyway, uh, I took some excerpts from his sermon and uh, kind of added a, a couple of things to it here. Um, he quotes uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, so I want to read uh, the first five verses from 2 Corinthians 4, kind of set this up. 2 Corinthians 4, the Apostle Paul wrote, 
Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth, we plainly commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age is blinded, and the God of this age is not talking about God, the God of this age is talking about Satan. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ. It, it is Satan who keeps people from being able to see the light of Christ. And anyway, so, the, so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glories of Christ. Listen to this part. Who is the image of God? Christ, who is the image of God. Uh, John MacArthur went on to say that, um, that Jesus is a full manifestation and revelation of God. Now Paul, in that passage in uh, Corinthians, he wanted it crystal clear that there is no equivocation as to the identity of Jesus Christ. He is God in human flesh. That's not unreasonable if you look at the life of Christ. Think of it this way. If God were a man, what would, what would we expect him to be like? Well, if God were a man, here's my list. And this is John MacArthur speaking, but you know this would be my list too. If God were a man, I would expect him to be sinless. Jesus was. He was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Even Pilate, who sat as his judge after all the hullabaloo that had gone on, came to this conclusion. I find in him what? No fault. No sin. The Roman centurion came to the same conclusion. And so did the thief on the cross. Nobody could ever bring an accusation against Jesus Christ. A trial before Annas, a trial before Caiaphas, a trial before Herod, passed back to Pilate. No one could come up with anything. If God were a man, I would expect him to be sinless. The record of history and the affirmation of apostolic testimony and the truth is, Jesus was sinless. If God were a man, I would expect him to speak the most profound and greatest words ever spoken, wouldn't you? Jesus did. A comment of one of his detractors was, we have never heard anyone speak like this. And every time he preached, people were absolutely astounded. If God were a man, I would also expect him to exert a profound influence over human personality. He did. Jesus did. The impact of Jesus Christ on humanity is without equal. In fact, if you just look at the disciples, who were basically just bumbling common characters, who had a hard time comprehending seemingly some of the most basic issues of theology and truth, but the power of Jesus' life transformed them into people who changed the world. And Jesus today is still transforming people like that. Influence. I would expect that if God were a man, he would have that kind of influence. Now, if God were a man, I would also expect him to do miracles. Jesus did repeatedly, publicly, unarguable, dramatically, prolifically. And if God were a man, I would expect him to know the future. Jesus did. He predicted things about himself, about the nation of Israel, details about the future, the end of the world. If God were a man, I would expect him to show us what God was like. Jesus did. What we saw in Jesus, we saw in him love and kindness and mercy and grace that was absolutely and utterly and beyond anything any human could ever experience. And we saw in him a level of virtue, fairness, wisdom, the likes of which the world has never seen. Any way you look at it, if God were to come into the world as a man, he would come out Jesus Christ. And that is the case. Jesus Christ is the exact reproduction of the invisible God. He makes the invisible God visible. 
uh, folks, like I said, um, that sermon still touches my heart today, even though it's been some nine years since I first heard it. And uh, I um, went and found that uh, sermon transcript, copied and pasted that portion. And uh, from time to time, it's good to go back and uh, read it and uh, to be reminded, even though I'm Christian and I've been walking uh, with God for many, many years now, it's, it's, it's good to be reminded of, uh, of who Jesus is. And it's good to remind ourselves, and it's good, you know, to sometimes just step back and uh, really take a look at who our Savior is. And uh, we know that someday Jesus is coming back, and we know that all the troubles, uh, everything, like I, you know, I mentioned 2020, and and, and you know what a year it's been. Um, but we know that one day all these troubles will be over, and uh, Jesus is going to come back, and He is going to restore all things and make all things new. We have that hope, and that is a glorious hope. And I pray that if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you will pray and receive him tonight. And you just ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins and to uh, come in and live inside your heart, to, to invite the Holy Spirit to come live in, in your heart. And uh, if you do that, then your eternal uh, destiny is forever secure. You will, uh, one day, you will enter into the presence of Christ and you will spend eternity with him forever. Uh, folks, I thank you and uh, I will see you next time.